In this video, we're going to look at the product rule for counting. So the product rule for counting is a really useful technique we can use to work out how many possible options there are to different problems. Here we've got a padlock, okay? And as you can see, it's a four uh, digit combination padlock where you can choose digits between zero and nine. And what we're going to do is we're going to work out how many different possible combinations there are. Now, one technique we use for something simple like this is just to consider the numbers we could have. The smallest number is 0000. zero, zero, zero. The largest number is 9,999. So altogether, there'd be 10,000 combinations because you've got from 1 to 9,999, but you've also got 0000. zero, zero, zero. So that means that would be the 10,000th ten thousandth uh, combination. Another way to do it is we can use this product rule for counting. Okay, So what we do is we look at the first digit, and for the first digit there's ten different numbers we could have. We look at where well, you've got zero to nine, so that's ten digits. You've got the second digit of the combination. Again, there's ten different combinations, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's ten combinations for that one. Uh, for the third digit, again, there's ten options for that one. And for the fourth digit, there's 10 options for that one. To work out how many possible different combinations there would be, we would just multiply these together. So we would do 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is 10,000. So that means there's 10,000 different combinations for this lock. So let's have a look at our first example. Donald picks a four digit number. The first digit is a prime number and the four digit number is even. How many different four digit numbers can he choose? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of our four digits again. So we've got the first digit, the second, the third, and the fourth. Okay, now first of all it says the first digit is even, or sorry, the first digit is a prime number. Okay, so the first digit is a prime number. So the prime numbers are, well the prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. So there's four different prime numbers that could be the first digit. So we're going to put four there. Next. It says the four digit number is even. Now that only affects the last number, okay, the last digit, because obviously to be even, it's going to end in a zero, two, four, six, and eight. So there's five different numbers, which would, you know, one of these five has to go on the end of the number to make it even. So it means there's a five there. Now the second digit and the third digit of the number, well, we don't actually have anything else that sort of, you know, restricts what they can be. So that means there's 10 different options for the second digit. That's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And likewise for the third digit. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna multiply these together and then that will tell us how many different possible four digit numbers you can choose. So four times 10, 40, times by 10, 400, times by five, 2,000. So there's 2,000 different possible numbers that Donald could have been thinking of. Okay, our second example. Kitty has 52 different playing cards. She gives one card to Grace, she then gives one card to Bill, and she gives one card to Jenny. In how many different ways can Kitty do this? Now this question is slightly different than the other ones and you're gonna see why now, okay? So first of all, we're gonna give a card to Grace, a card to Bill, and a card to Jenny. Now, first of all, she's gonna give a card to Grace. Now there's 52 different cards, she can give any of those to Grace. So there's gonna be 52 there. Now, for Bill. Now, she's going to have given one card to Grace. So that means there's 51 possible options that she could give to Bill. Because obviously, if she's given one away, there's only 51 cards left in the deck. And then for Jenny, well, if she's given a card to Bill now, that means there's only 50 cards in the deck. So that means that in how many different ways can Katie do this? We would times 52 by 51 by 50. And if we multiply those numbers together, that would tell us what our answer is. And what we do is calculation, the answer is 132,600. So there's 132,600 different ways that Kitty can give one card to Grace, one card to Bill, and one card to Jenny. Okay, our next question. So the next question says, in year 11, there are 50 boys and 61 girls. One of the boys and one of the girls are gonna be chosen at random to see the head teacher. Work at the number of different possible pairs that can be chosen. So again, for the boys, there's 50 different boys to choose from, and for the girls, there's 61 different girls to choose from. So to work out the different number of pairs that can be chosen, we just multiply these together. So we just do 50 times by 61, and that gives us 3,050. So there's 3,050 different possible pairings that we could have. Now following on from that, our next example says, in year 11, there are 50 boys. Two of the boys are gonna be chosen at random to see the head teacher work out the number of different pairs that can be chosen. So this time we're gonna have a look at the first boy and the second boy. Now, 
Um, first of all, we've got 50 boys to choose from initially. Okay, so for the first boy selected, there's going to be 50 different boys that, that can be chosen from. And that means that if one of those is chosen, that only leaves 49 for the second one. Now we're going to times those two together. Now before we sort of think that's just a final answer, we need to consider this. Now for instance, if I had two students, just to call them Alan and Bob, um, for the first boy we could get Alan, and for the second boy we could get Bob. But likewise, we could potentially get Bob and then Alan. Now it says work out the number of different pairs that can be chosen. Now obviously we don't want to sort of count Alan and Bob as a different pair to Bob and Alan because it is the same pair of students. So what we're going to do is we're going to times these two together and then half it. Now the reason we didn't do that in the last example is um, it said you know there was 50 boys and 61 girls. Now obviously you can't get the boy and the girl and you know the other way you know mixed up. You know for instance if you had Alan and I and if you had Hannah. You know, you're if you're picking the boy and then the girl, you can only get Alan and Hannah, so we don't need to ha you know to half that one. But here, because it's boy and then boy, and we want to find out how many different possible pairs there can be, you know, we don't want to duplicate the pairs. So what we're going to do is we're going to times these together. Fifty times forty-nine, so fifty times forty-nine is two thousand four hundred and fifty. But then we're going to divide that number by two, and that means that whenever we divide that by two. Obviously, you know, here, you know, this 2,450 includes all the possible combinations for the first boy chosen, second boy chosen, but obviously that includes all the duplicates. So we divide it by two and we get an answer of 1,225 possible pairings of students. Okay, and our last example. Our last example said a food standards inspector is going to visit three establishments in one day. In a town, there's 40 restaurants and 12 cafes. He's going to write a list of three different establishments that he's going to visit and the order will either be, so this particular order he's going to do it in, it's either going to be cafe, restaurant, restaurant or restaurant, cafe, cafe. How many different possible lists can he write? Okay, so let's first of all look at cafe, restaurant, restaurant. So that's going to be, well, cafe to begin with, well we've got 12 of those. And then we times that by restaurant, well there's 40 restaurants. But given that he's going to visit three different establishments, for the next restaurant he's only going to times by 39 because he's not going to do the same one twice. Okay, so for cafe, restaurant, restaurant is 12 times 40 times by 39 gives us the answer 18,720. And then for restaurant, cafe, cafe, well that's going to be restaurant to begin with, so that's going to be 40 that he can choose from, and then times by a 12 for the like the number of cafes, but obviously he's going to visit one of those, so it only leaves 11 for the last cafe. And if we times them together, 40 times by 12 times by 11, that gives us 5,280. And if we add those together, our 18,720, add our 5,280, it gives us 24,000. So that means there's 24,000 different possible lists that he could write, which were either cafe, restaurant, restaurant, or restaurant, cafe, cafe. And that's it.